Hey guys, we left off with Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane, which is kind of on the outskirts at the foot of the Mount of Olives. And he's so distressed over what's about to take place. He, he knows exactly what he's going to have to go through. He's been diligently praying to his father, take this cup away from me, nevertheless not my will, but thine will be done. He knows what's happened. He knows that Judas has already gone to the religious leaders and sold him out, told them exactly where he'll be. And it's probably from this place in which he's praying in the garden that he could look out into the city and he could see Judas with his multitude of soldiers, these heavily armed soldiers with their lanterns, marching from the governor's quarters out of the city, down through the Kidron Valley and up to the Mount of Olives where he's praying. And so one of the reasons they have so many soldiers is because they're so fearful of an, a riot, an, an uproar when they arrest Jesus. So they're going to do it at night. They're going to do it in secret. In verses 41 and 42, Jesus says the time would come. It's, he's going to be betrayed in the hands of sinners. His betrayers at hand. And that's where we left off in verse 43. Let's, well, let's pick up there. Mark 14, 43. And immediately while he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, with great multitude with swords and clubs, came from the chief priests and the scribes and the elders. Now his betrayer had given them a signal, saying, Whomever I kiss, he is the one. Seize him and lead him away safely. And as soon as he had come, immediately he went up to him and said to him, Rabbi, Rabbi, and kissed him. Then they laid their hands on him and took him. And one of those who stood by drew his sword and struck the servant of the high priest and cut off his ear. And then Jesus answered and said to them, have you come out as against a robber with swords and clubs to take me? I was daily with you in the temple teaching, and you did not seize me, but the scriptures must be fulfilled. So we have some of the events that took place at the arrest of Jesus. You know, Judas had come up with this plan that when they get there, he's going to kiss Jesus so they know exactly who he is so they don't arrest the wrong guy. And so what a horrible act of betrayal. I mean, something that is meant to express love and affection is now becomes a knife in the back. It's, it's a kiss of death. That's where we get that phrase from. So he comes up to him and he says, Rabbi, Rabbi, and he kisses him. And they seize Jesus. But one of the disciples that was standing nearby takes out one of the two swords the disciples had with him. And he swings for the neck of the high priest's uh, servant. And when he ducks, he only gets his ear. And Jesus says, Peter, put away your sword. You know, I don't want you to die here. Those who live by the sword die by the sword. And he heals the ear of the high priest. We see all that in Matthew's account. But notice what he says in 48 and 49. Are you coming out against me like I'm some kind of robber? You know, if I did something wrong, then I gave you plenty of opportunity when I was in the city during the day with you to arrest me, but you didn't do it then. Then it, look at the last phrase. He says, but the scriptures may be fulfilled. You don't have to do everything that you're doing in order to arrest me. I'll go with you willingly. But if I didn't want you to do it, you wouldn't do it. You know, I, no one takes my life from me, but I lay it down. You know, Jesus' life wasn't taken from him. It was given. What an encouraging thought. Look there in verse 50. Then they all forsook him and fled. Now a certain young man followed him, having a linen cloth thrown around his naked body. And the young man laid hold of him. And he left the linen cloth and he fled from them naked. If you ask me, verse 50 is one of the saddest verses in the Bible. They did just as Jesus told them they would. The shepherd was struck and the sheep scattered. And then we have this obscure story about this young man, possibly Mark. It's only found in the Gospel of Mark with the sheep wrapped around his body. And as the soldiers are leading Jesus out to be tried, they grab a hold of the sheet of this young man and he runs away naked without it. So what's the point? Well, he was one of the last ones with Jesus, but even he fled. Imagine, just put yourself in Jesus' shoes for just a moment. You're about to be falsely tried and accused for a crime that you did not commit. And you know that you're about to face some of the worst suffering in all of the world, both physically and spiritually. You're going to be separated from God, which is only compared to what we might think as hell, eternal t torture. And you have your best friends with you. And yet, even though your best friend says, even if we have to die with you, even if they have to put us on the cross with you, Jesus, we will not betray you. And yet when push comes to shove, they all run away. They flee. What an incredibly dark point in Jesus' life here. 